tutorial we're going to be looking at how to create a very very simple uh, squash game. Um, we've actually done quite a lot of the hard work already, we've done the animation, we've looked at collisions, um, all we need to do is now bring all this together, um, all the things we've done so far, in order to create a simple game. So let's actually look at the game running. So you see I've got the ball bouncing, if I miss it, it goes game over and quits the program, and if I hit it, it bounces. As you can see, the idea is you defend this side of the screen, and if you miss, you get game over. Obviously I'm not very good at this game. Um, so you can see this is actually the beginning of a Pong game, okay? um, which is where we're actually going to be going towards. Let's have a look at some of the change we've made. Now, first of all, um, I've changed the variable name from obstacle to paddle, um, just to keep things um, simple, and I've added uh, a paddle dy. Now, remember I had dx dy to control how fast and direction it's going, um, I'm now going to have a paddle dy to control how fast the paddle's moving. Because the paddle's now going to move, based on user input, I need to have some way of controlling its speed. Initially it's going to be zero, because I don't want the paddle moving on its own. Now, I've now added some um, inputs. So in the previous tool we looked at how to control um, the keyboards and check for key down, key up. Um, and all I'm doing is if I press an A key on the keyboard, I want to set paddle dy to be minus four, okay? I.e. it's moving up the screen. If the Z key is pressed, I want to start moving down. And as the key is pressed down, I want to keep moving. But when I release the key, I want to stop the paddle. So the idea is that as I'm holding the key down, it'll keep moving. When I let go, it'll stop moving. Okay. If I um, did it something like this uh, and did um, I've no paddle dot move ip uh, zero by minus four, what happened is that you have to keep pressing the key loads and loads of times to get it moving down, uh, which is very um, very bad gaming. On this one I'm using an OR um, to link these two together because um, it doesn't matter which key I've, left, I've released, I want to stop the paddle. Now the reason I've actually added the if statement in the first place is because later on what I want to do is have two paddles moving, both controlled by um, humans, um, and I don't want to stop both paddles the second one person releases the key. So, because otherwise that will be unfair. So that's, um, that's the changes there. Let's actually have a look at the rest of it. So I've added something to move the paddle in the exact same way I move the ball. I've also added an additional collision. So I've split out when x is less than zero on the boundary check. And if it is less than zero, I display game over and quit the program. The collision detection is exactly the same. I've not changed that in any way, shape, or form. The only thing I've changed is I'm using paddle.right and paddle.bottom. That's the same as writing paddle.x plus the width of the paddle. And if I remember rightly, off the top of my head, the width of it was 15. Okay, it's exactly the same as writing that, but that's a bit tidier. Um, so paddle at right is the right hand side of the paddle, the border of it, bottom is the bottom end of it. Okay, um, And that's it, and that is the changes you need to make to get a, a very simple squash game going. As you can see it's very straightforward, um, and it's quite easy to see how we can then expand this to have two paddles uh, to create a basic pong game, and that's the next tutorial.